Today, I'll show you how to create a snowstorm using the effects in OpenTunes. Hello friends, and today I want to create an overlay of snow falling to use on my stream next week to add a bit of seasonal atmosphere. But for you, this will already have passed by the time this video comes out, but I will add a link to it in the card above and in the description below so you can take a look. But thanks to OpenTunes' effects features, we can create a snowstorm really easily. And if you've not used the effects before, don't worry, it is really easy and I'll show you everything you need. So I've got a new project here, and I'm actually using Tahoma 2D today, but this works with any version of OpenTunes. So if I switch to my FX room, and I work in the FX schematic, and that's this panel here, and you might have this in a different room, but if you've not got it, you can open it as a new panel from the Panels menu in Tahoma, or the Windows menu in OpenTunes. So just choose Schematic. And then click the button at the bottom right here to switch between the stage and FX schematics. And you'll know you're on the FX schematic if you've got the FX button at the bottom here. So in my dock panel, I can switch between the two and the FX button is here, so that's the FX schematic. So then just right click on the panel and choose Add Effects and then hover over the Render option and then over the Particles folder and choose Falling Snow. And all of the particle effects use the same basic controls, but just with different initial values set. And that adds a new column with the effect lasting for 100 frames. And if you turn on the preview mode by pressing this eye button at the top right of the viewer, you'll see these dots representing where the snow will be. And if I click play, you'll see them falling just like snow does. So you can see that you've already got the basic setup for snow and for how it's moving. And there's two things to do to get a nice effect. First, this snow node is using a placeholder image for the snow, which is just a small black shape. So we'll add some small white snowflakes of different sizes on a new level. And the second thing is to add a dark background to make editing and preview easier. And we'll add that background first by adding a vector level. and then drawing a filled rectangle. So we'll choose the geometry tool, change the rectangle shape if necessary, tick the auto fill option. And if I zoom out slightly, I can draw a rectangle just larger than the camera view. And then we've moved that column behind the falling snow column by clicking and dragging the handle at the top of the column header. And then we'll extend that single drawing for the same 100 frames and now, when we draw the white snow, it'll show up better. So let's add that. Now I'll add this on a Toons raster level, but you can choose any level type. So I'll go to frame one, click for new Toons raster level, name it snow. And I'll just paint a few different flake shapes so that they're not all the same. So if I go to the 2D room, and with the paintbrush chosen, I change the main color to white, We'll zoom in, and with the brush size set quite small, we'll just paint some small little shapes like this on the first few frames. With the shapes going in different directions and different sizes. So then if we go back to the FX schematic, and we just need to plug this column as an input into the texture input for the falling snow FX node. So we'll click and drag from the right hand side of the snow node and drag it over the texture input and then release it. So then immediately we can see on this frame that the drawings we just made for the snow are used for each of the snowflakes. But we don't need the snow column to be output directly to the scene, so we can click and drag over that line and then press delete. So now the snow is only used as an input for the snow FX node. And now with preview selected and we hit play, you'll see it's using my images for the snow. But a better way to preview this is to use the preview window. So from the render menu, 
we choose preview settings. We change the shrink option down to either two or three, which will render your animation to a smaller size, either half size if you choose two, or a third of the size if you choose three. And this makes it quicker to render. And then hit the preview button. It'll pop open the preview window. Let's reset it so it's shown at 100% size. Now all the frames will be rendered and cached so that when you hit play, it'll play at the normal pace. So now you can see those snowflakes moving at a pace that looks like a small snowstorm. And these default settings might be good enough for your scene, but there are many, many options you can change to get exactly the type of effect that you're after. Whether to have more or fewer snowflakes, to change the speed they're falling, or to increase the wind that makes them blow about in different directions. And to make any of these changes, just double click on the snow effect node, and then take a look through each tab. And to get started, click the question mark at the top right of this window. And that'll give you a pop-up window with help about each of the values you can change. But once you've read about them, the best thing is to just have a play and edit them and then preview your animation and see how it changes. So I'll go ahead and edit mine now. Welcome back. So I've spent the last 10 minutes or so trying out different values to get the effect that I wanted. But first I extended the snow and background columns to last for 10 minutes. And then I experimented with the values for the snow effect. So the main ones that I changed were first on the source tab. I changed the starting frame from minus 100 to 1. And it defaults at minus 100 which means that the snow effect will have calculated 100 frames before you see anything. So that on your first actual frame you'll have a screen full of snow that's already been calculated to have started over the previous 100 frames worth of time. But I didn't want this pre-calculation, I wanted the snow to start on my first frame and then build up to a screen full of snow. So I set it to 1. And then I changed the birth rate to change during the animation by clicking on the birth rate key button, this diamond here, and then setting the value to show fewer flakes at the start to build up to a larger amount. So if I select on the first frame, you'll see I set it to two at the beginning. So if I go to the timing room, and then in the particle effect, I choose to show the birth rate, and you'll see it starts at two, it stays at 2 for a while, and then it increases to 10 over a few frames, stays at 10 for most of the animation, and then near the end, I've set a keyframe on 10, I reduce it down to 2, leave it at 2, and then fade down to 0. And again, you don't need to do this for your animation, but it just gives that more natural effect that I was after. And then, on the Birth Params tab, I increased the lifetime so that each flake would last longer on screen. And finally, on the Animation tab, I added some rotation of 10 degrees so the flakes look more natural as they fall. And by adjusting the extra speed slider, it adds some extra random rotation between 0 and 5 degrees so they don't all rotate in the same way or by the same amount. And in the end, I left the black background column enabled so that the animation renders with the black background. And this was because I used a setting to remove it in OBS for my stream. And then because this is a long animation and will take a while to render, I extended my FFmpeg timeout, which you can find in the file menu, preferences dialog, import export section, just here. And I changed it from 600 to 6000. And if you have a problem rendering a longer animation, you might want to change this too. Finally, in the output settings, I just changed the video type to MP4. I checked the frame numbers were correct. I gave it a nice name, and then I hit save and render. So here it is, rendered and playing now. And I'll combine this with an effect to show the snow building up that I'll build next week. 
so do subscribe and hit the bell to not miss that. But this gives exactly the effect that I wanted, so I'm really happy with it. And if you want to use this snowstorm in your animations, I'll add a link to the full 10 minute video here on YouTube, and I'm happy for you to download it and use it in your own projects. But do have a go at creating this effect yourself, and see if you can make a snow effect for your winter animations. So I'll be back next week when I'll be using the Auto In Between feature in OpenToons, I'll be adding snow drifts at the bottom of the screen. So I'll see you then, and that's a guarantee.